But Mr. Binismagi, thank you for coming on. You have this kind of great eagle eye view of central banks, you know, banks regulation, and of course this all folded into your country of Italy. How does the Italian standoff between Rome and Brussels actually end, and how much damage could it do to the Italian economy? Well, how it will end, uh, we will see. I mean, uh, certainly doesn't help the Italian economy because these uh, 300 basis points spread uh, is, uh, is increasing the cost for taxpayers, uh, is increasing the cost for companies that need to uh, issue bonds, is increasing the cost for banks, uh, which also have to uh, raise funds in the markets. So my fear is that, like in 2011, the rise in, in uh, the spreads will lead to a you know, credit crunch and accelerate the slowdown in the economy. But, but if it's a real credit crunch, are you worried that actually this Italian EU standoff could impact the ECB's ability to exit from QE? No, I think it's, I think it's too late, frankly. Uh, in any case, the ECB uh, has to devise its policy based on the performance of the whole euro area. Um, so it cannot change its policy just for one country. Um, and, you know, the, the expectation of exiting QE has been uh, there for some time. It has not really affected the other interest rates, mainly the Italian one. So I, I don't think they can change policy really at this stage. Do, do you worry that if there is a standoff actually becoming uglier between Brussels and Italy, that Italian voters will turn Eurosceptic? Could there be a secret plan to take Italy out of the Euro currency? Well, I mean, so far, confronting the EU has helped to gain some popularity. On the other hand, Italians are getting worried about the, the economic situation. So there is a dualism. And I think politically, I don't know when uh, they can really stop uh, this, uh, uh, this strategy. Uh, because at a certain point, and we've seen this with the, um, with the uh, tender for Italian bonds for, um, for households, I mean, dedicated to households. To retail investors, it hasn't gone that well. It shows that in the end, I mean, you know, Italians, you know, are careful about where they invest their money, and they may not fully trust this strategy. Uh, although in the short term, it's it's kind of you know, it makes them feel uh, that it Italian government is, is finally uh, trying to you know to 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 reach uh, and to achieve something in favor of Italy. But you know, that's that's very. Political. It's not based on anything very concrete. Uh, Matteo Salvini today, Salvini today was talking to Rai, where he says, "Look, the, the bonds are actually out of the government's control." I mean, that can't be right. It seems that every time they say something that is anti-euro, then actually the yield, I mean, the spread with with German bonds, yeah. you know, rises. Will Italians take issue with that? No, I think the, the Bank of Italy has even published a paper showing, you know, on a high-frequency basis how the statements of uh, the two vice uh, uh, prime minister uh, really impact uh, the bond spreads. So, you know, uh, and Mario Draghi has said this several times that, you know, talking so much and, you know, confronting, threatening is in fact damaging the, uh, the markets and, uh, you know. How does Italy grow? Okay, D does it need infrastructure spending? Does it actually need to breach the deficit to be able to grow, to be on a solid footpath? Well, I mean, <laughs> the, um, the experience of the other countries shows that what is really needed in Italy is structural reforms and investment. The problem is that in both cases, it has been very difficult. On investment, they, uh, the previous government actually adopted um, a, tender, a new tender law uh, which is basically making it impossible for companies to, to, to work. It has been drafted by, by judges, I mean, you know, anti-corruption judges. So it's very rigid. Uh, they are trying to change it. But there is an additional issue, which is which infrastructure do the government, does the government want to, to build? And clearly there is a, a division, uh, you know, a, a totally different uh, viewpoint. Uh, Five Star Movement is against uh, building big infrastructure, at least. And they have already lost uh, the fight on the uh, oil, uh, on the gas pipe, yeah. on the uh, so on several issues. So you know they may want to 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 fight on others. The Northern League is for in, you know uh, constructing, uh, building infrastructure. So this is an issue where the, clearly there are tensions within the government. And then there are other structural reforms that Italy has started to do with the previous government, 
that now uh, are at risk of being on, on you know, uh, totally, uh, uh, you know, uh, unfolded. So uh, the, the problem of growth, it is a bit of an illusion that just by spending, especially current spending, uh, uh, growth will, will pick up. I think the markets are not believing it, uh, economists are not believing it. All those who have testified in front of the parliament, from the Bank of Italy to the Statistical Institute, uh, uh, the Fiscal Council, they all said these numbers just don't uh, match, I mean, they don't work.